Chancellor, Vice Chancellor, distinguished and honored guests, graduates, ladies and gentlemen. I need not pause to say how very delighted I am to be here today and to have the privilege of sharing with you in this significant experience. It is impossible to begin, as words are certainly inadequate for me to express my deep and genuine appreciation to the University of Bradford for bestowing upon me a great honor in such a significant way. Occasionally in life, there are those moments of unutterable fulfillment which cannot be completely explained by those symbols called words. The meaning can only be articulated by the inaudible language of the heart. Such is the moment I'm presently experiencing. I experience this high and joyous moment not for myself alone, but for those devotees of equality of opportunity who have moved so courageously against the ramparts of injustice and who in the process have acquired new estimate of their own human worth. And I can assure you that your honoring me today in this very meaningful way is of inestimable value for the continuance of my humble efforts. And although I cannot in any way say that I am worthy of such a great honor, I can also assure you that you give me renewed courage and vigor to carry on in this struggle to make equality of opportunities in education, health, and employment a reality for all men and women wherever they are. In honoring me today, you not only honor me, but you honor the hundreds of people with whom I have worked and with whom I have associated in the struggle for equality of opportunity. And so I say thanks, not only for myself, but I also thank you for them. And I can assure you that this day will remain dear to me as long as the cords of memory shall lengthen. I'm very happy to be here with you. It is always wonderful to be with young people. The funny thing about life is that you realize the value of something only when it begins to leave you. As my hair turned from black to salt and pepper, and finally without salt and pepper, I have begun to realize the importance of youth. The same time, I have begun to truly appreciate some of the lessons I have learned along the way. I hope you will find them useful when you plan your own career and life. While it is important for us to know what we are not good at, we must also cherish what is good in us. That is because it is only our strengths that can give us the energy to correct our weaknesses. I'm also aware that no one bets a hundred every time. Life has many challenges. You win some and lose some. You must enjoy winning, but do not let it go to the head. The moment it does, you are already on your way to failure. And if you do encounter failure along the way, treat it as an equally natural phenomenon. Don't beat yourself for it, or anyone else for that matter. Accept it, look at your own share in the problem, learn from it and move on. The important thing is when you lose, do not lose the lesson. I've also learned the importance of humility. Sometimes when you get so much in life, you really start wondering whether you deserve all of it. This brings me to the value of gratitude. We have so much to be grateful for. Our parents, our teachers, our seniors have done so much for us that we can never repay them. Many people focus on the shortcomings because obviously no one can be perfect. But it is important to first acknowledge what we have received. Nothing in life is permanent, but when a relationship ends, rather than becoming bitter, we must learn to savor the memory of the good things while they lasted. I've also learned that we must always strive for excellence. One way of achieving excellence is by looking at those better than ourselves. 
Keep learning what they do differently. Emulate it. But excellence cannot be imposed from outside. We must also feel the need from within. It must become an obsession. It must involve not only our mind, but also our heart and soul. Excellence is not an act, but a habit. I remember the inspiring lines of a poem to, which says that your reach must always exceed your grasp. That is heaven on earth. Ultimately, your only competition is yourself. I've learned to never give up in the face of adversity. It comes on you suddenly without warning. One can either succumb to self-pity, wring your hands in despair, or decide to deal with the situation with courage and dignity. Always keep in mind that it's only the test of fire that makes fine steel. The greatest thing education does is it structures your mind. The key behind successful people is how you handle failure rather than success. Power of analysis is sharpened by education and how it helps in self-analysis. I could analyze my own mistakes so I could correct them. You aim high, take risks, and develop this fearlessness. What makes you invincible is self-belief. I've learned that whilst you must be open to change, do not compromise on your values. Mahatma Gandhiji said, you must open the windows of your mind, but you must not be swept off your feet by the breeze. You must define what your core values are and what you stand for. And these values are not so difficult to define. Values like honesty, integrity, consideration, and humility have survived for generations. Values are not just in words, used to describe them as much as in simple acts. At the end of the day, it is values that define a person more than the achievements, because it is the means of achievement that decide how long the achievements will last and sustain. Do not be tempted by shortcuts. The shortcuts can make you lose your way and end up becoming the longest, longest way to your destination. And final lesson I've learned is we must have faith in our own ideas, even if, it, even if everyone says that we are wrong. I wish you all the best in your life and career. I hope you achieve success in whatever way you define it and what gives you the maximum happiness in life. Remember, those who win are those who believe they can. I want to thank the University of Bradford for this honor and Mark Garrett in particular, the manner in which he enlisted all my short and uh, very insignificant contribution. I just want to, in this august gathering, demonstrate to you that my mustache is real. <laughs> People have often accused me of using Velcro, but it isn't. Once again, have a kind day. Thank you very much.